Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to explain how now we can make a simple MP3 player using Java FX. So, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We're going to build an MP3 player today, so pick a pane of your choosing. I'm going to use an anchor pane because they're fairly simple to use. And this doesn't need to be so tall. That's not too bad. Okay, let's give this pane a unique ID. For the ID, let's just say pane. Now let's add a label to hold the name of the current song. Labels are found underneath controls. Just drag and drop one, place it near the top. Let me increase the font size. Pick whatever font size that you want. Maybe a little bit bigger. That's not too bad. Okay, then let me expand this. And I'm going to center it. So go to alignment, then center. And let's give this label a unique ID. Let's say that this is song label. Then let's add a progress bar directly underneath. So that is found underneath controls. Progress bar. Let's place it underneath our label and expand it. And this will be song progress bar. And we'll need a bunch of buttons for controls. That is also found underneath controls. Let's begin with a play button. Let's expand it. I'll increase the font size too. And change text to play. Let's copy this and paste it. The next button will be pause. We'll link some methods later on. Then we have reset to reset the song. Previous to go to the previous song. Let me decrease the font size. That's good. Then next to go to the next song. Okay, we'll need a drop down menu of some sort, preferably a combo box to change the speed of the song that is playing. Okay, for the prompt text, let's say speed. And then a volume slider. Let's use a horizontal slider. I think I'm going to expand this a little bit. Just so we can fit that slider in. This combo box of speed, I'm just going to give a unique ID of speed box or speed combo box works too, I suppose. And this volume slider, let's give an ID of volume slider. I think I'm going to expand the size of this label. So let me drag and drop the buttons down. Same thing goes with the combo box and our slider and the progress bar. And let me increase the size of this label and increase the font size too. That's pretty good. And I'll change the text. Let's say MP3 player. Now what we'll do at this point is give each button a unique ID and link a method using on action. So let's begin with the play button. Play button on action, play media. Then go to pause, pause button on action, pause media, reset button, reset media. Okay, previous button, previous button on action, previous media. The next button, next button, next media. Our combo box, we have an idea of speed box on action, change speed. Our volume slider doesn't have a on action section, so we're going to add a change listener to that within the initialize method. Let's just make sure that we have a unique ID of volume slider. Same thing goes with our progress bar, song progress bar. Our label is named song label. 
Okay, there's a few things that we need to do within our volume slider. So click on your volume slider underneath properties. Let's keep min at zero. So zero will be muted basically. Max will be 200. So we can increase the sound of our music, the volume to 200%. The default will be 100. So let's change value to 100. And that should be it for our volume slider. You can also change the color scheme of your nodes by using a CSS style property. So click on a node of your choosing. Let's change the background color of our pane. So I'm going to click on my anchor pane, then go to properties. Then underneath style, I can add a CSS property of my choosing. So if I would like black, I can type in the word black, or I can use a hex value. So let's say six twos. Now we can do something similar with the label and then go to text fill and change the color here. So that's another option too. And we are done building the layout of our MP3 player. Let's make sure that our controller class is linked, save, and then head to our controller class. Before we forget, we should refresh our project. So I'm going to go to my project folder and click refresh. So in order for this program to run, we need to declare all of those different methods that are linked to each button. So they can be found within your fxml file. Then you can see anything underlined in red will need to declare as a method. So let's head to our controller class. And the first method that we'll declare is our initialize method, but we need to implement the initializable interface. Then hover over controller, add any unimplemented methods. After our initialize method, we're going to declare our play media method, public void play media, followed by pause media. Let me copy this, paste it. Let's change play to pause media. Then we have reset media. Previous media. Next media. Change speed. And there will be one parameter of action, event, event. Action, event, event. We'll also be implementing a timer. So let's create a method named begin timer, as well as cancel timer. Okay, we should at least be able to run this now. So if you need some music to work with, you can always head to YouTube's audio library and find a couple songs that you like, and then there should be a download link underneath each video. So find maybe three songs that you like, and then we can move on. To make my music easy to find within my project folder, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to name this music, then finish. So I have a music folder within my project folder. Find the MP3 files that you downloaded. I'm going to copy them, go to my music folder, and then paste them. So we should have a couple MP3 files within our music folder. Preceding our initialize method, we're going to declare everything that we'll need throughout this program. So we'll use some FXML injection for our pane. Private pane, pane, at FXML, private, label, song, label, then we have a bunch of buttons. Private, button, play button, followed by pause button, reset button, previous button, then next button. At FXML, private, combo box, this is for our speed. We're going to list a generic type of string. Speed box. At FXML private slider volume slider at FXML private progress bar song progress bar. We're going to create a file to hold our directory of music. Private file directory 
as well as an array of files. So that would be private file array files and an array list of files private array list will list a generic type of file and this will be named songs. This is kind of like our playlist. Private int song number to keep track of what number song we're on. Now we'll need some speeds for our speed combo box. So that will be an array of integers. Private int array speeds and list a bunch of different speeds that you want. So think of this as in percent. So let's say we have 25%, 50, 75, 100 will be the default, 125, 150, 175, and 200. We'll need a timer, private, timer, timer. Basically the timer is going to keep track of our progress bar and update it every second or so. So private, timer, timer, followed by private, timer, task, task. And lastly, private boolean running. We will set this to true or false depending if our player is currently playing a song or not. Okay, it's time to fill in our initialize method. So the first thing that we're going to do is initialize our array list of songs. This will function as a playlist as well as our directory. So within our initialize method, take songs equals new array list, list a generic type of file. And we are going to set our directory equal to new file and pass in the name of this folder, music. Okay, so we will take our array of files, which is up here and set this equal to directory dot list files. So a quick summary about this method is that this method list files will get all of the different files within our directory. So if we have three songs in here, it's going to store all of the songs within this collection of files. So it's going to continue until there's no more. So let's check to see if files does not equal null. If it does not equal null, then we'll create a for each loop for file file in our array of files. We will take songs. That's our array list dot add file. Just to test this, I'm going to system.out.println each file, just so that we know that it's working fine. Okay, not bad. Okay, so I forgot to declare a media and media player object, so let's take care of that because I forgot. Private media media, then private media player media player. Now within our initialize method, after our if statement, we're going to finish instantiating our media as well as our media player object. Media equals new media and pass in songs dot get and our index. Our index is going to be our song number. So in the beginning, it's going to be zero, the beginning of our playlist followed by dot to URI, followed by to string. Then we're going to load our media player with our media object. So media player equals new media player, then pass in your media object. Now I'm going to change the text of our song label to reflect the name of the current song that is playing. Well, the initial song that is playing at least. Song label dot set text, and we need to pass in a string. So to get the name of the current song, type our array list of songs, songs dot get, and our index is our song number. Initially, it's going to be zero, followed by dot get name. 
and let's test this. So the first song in my playlist is Block Party. So my song label should be updated with that name. BlockParty.mp3 We'll be returning to our initialize method a little bit later on. Let's fill in our play media method just to test it. So take media player dot play. There. So when I click on our play button, it should play our song. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's work on pause next. So within our pause media method, take our media player and use the pause method. Let's try it again. We can play. And we can pause. All right, within reset media, all we have to type is media player dot seek. And we have to pass in a duration. Our duration is going to be seconds 0, 0. I guess just 0 works too. Okay, let's try the reset button. Okay, play. Nice. Let's fill in our next media method to change to the next song. So we'll need to check the current song number. If song number is less than our songs dot size minus one, then we will move to the next song. So we will increment our song number by one, song number plus plus, this is our index, and we will take our media player and use the stop method. And we will play it later on. And we will load our media with a new file. Media, actually we can copy this part. So copy media and media player, these two lines, as well as our song label too, I suppose. Let's copy all of those lines and within our if statement, within the next media method, Let's paste these. So what would happen if we reached the end of our playlist? So let's take a look. So I'm just going to hit next, next, and we can't move past the last song. So we would like to go back to the beginning of the playlist. So that will be our else statement. Else, let's copy all of this code, but we're going to make one change. Set song number equal to zero. So I should be able to cycle through my playlist using the next button. So I'm beginning with Black Party here, followed by Level Up, 12 Speed, then back to Black Party. And let's play these just to be sure that it's working. So we have Black Party, Level Up, then 12 Speed. So if you want these songs to automatically play after hitting the next button, you can just add this line. We just have to call our play media method at the end. So at the end of our if statement, play media if you want the song to play automatically after hitting next. And add that to your else statement as well. So these should play automatically after hitting the next button, but you can keep out this feature if you want. Now let's fill in our previous media method so we can move backwards through our playlist. And honestly, we just need to copy everything within our next media method and make just three small changes. So let's copy all of this, then paste it. Then within our if statement, change if song number is greater than zero. Take our song number and decrement it. Then change within our else statement, song number, equals songs dot size method minus one. So we should be able to cycle backwards through our playlist now. Let's try it. So I have block party to begin. Now 
Now our next task is to work on our speed box to change the speed of the song that is currently playing. Currently there's no values. So within our initialize method, head to the bottom and add these lines of code. We'll create a for loop. Int i equals zero. We will continue this for loop as long as i is less than speeds dot length. Speeds is our array that we initialized in the beginning. Then increment i by one. And after each iteration of this for loop, we will take our speed box dot get items, then use the add method and pass in a string. The string that we're going to pass in is integer dot to string our array of speeds at index of i. So this should populate our speed box, our combo box. So we have speeds 25 through 200, or whatever speeds that you filled in within this array in the beginning. This part isn't necessary, but I'm going to add plus percent after each of my speeds, just so that it's easier to understand. So I have speeds 25% through 200%. After our for loop, we're going to create a reference to our change speed method down at the bottom here. So at the end of our initialize method, we will take our speed box dot set on action. Then within the set on action method, take this colon colon, so we're making a reference to our change speed method. Then let's fill in our change speed method near the bottom. To change the speed of our media player, we're going to change the rate. Media player dot set rate and pass in a double integer dot parse int speed box dot get value then multiply this by 0 0.01 now one issue with our speed box is that we added this percent sign to the end of each value and since we're getting the value then multiplying it by 0 0.01 we're not going to get the intended results so just to test this i'm going to remove this percent sign then there's one change we're going to make right after. So let's play, then change the speed. So we have 125. Now, if you were to keep this percent sign in and append each speed value with a percent at the end, this is going to be the result. We'll just run into an error, really. So we need to account for this percent sign, and one easy way to do that is to create a substring. So let me turn this line into a comment. So here's the change that we're going to make. After get value, we'll create a substring dot sub string. We need a beginning and ending index. Zero comma speed box dot get value followed by dot length method minus one. So this should work now. So we have all of our speeds plus their percentages. And we can change the speed. That's real slapper right there. one issue if I were to change the speed of a song it's not going to be retained when we move to the next song here's an example so this first song of mine will play at 200% but then if I switch songs it's not going to be at 200% it's going to be the default of 100% even though our speed box says 200% here's an example So these other songs were playing at 
So after we change songs, let's call our change speed method. I think the easiest way to do this would be to head to our play media method, and before we actually play our media, let's change the speed. So change speed. Okay, so we need to pass in an argument because there's a parameter of action event event, but we can just pass in null. Okay, let's try it. So I'm first going to change the speed and then switch songs. Okay, now check this out. What if I was to change songs without changing the volume first? So we'll run into an error. The reason that this is happening if I were to change songs without changing the speed first is because with our speed combo box, if we do not initially select a speed, this will have a default value of null. And then when we do change our speed, what we're doing is that we're taking our speed multiplying it by 0 0.01. We're basically multiplying it null times 0 0.01. So let's check to see if our value of our speed box is equal to null before changing the speed. So within our change speed method, let's check to see if our speed box is equal to null. If speed box dot get value is equal to null then we will set a default rate media player dot set rate and let's set this to one else we can change the speed normally to whatever the speed box value is and let's try it so we should be able to cycle through our song. Now we have our volume slider to work on to change the volume of our song that is playing. We'll add an anonymous change listener to our volume slider at the end of our initialize method. So head to the end of your initialize method and we will take our volume slider dot value property method dot add listener and we're going to pass in an anonymous change listener new change listener then we will add a generic of number then add a set of parentheses then curly braces so be sure to add any unimplemented methods so when you adjust the knob on your volume listener you're going to call this method of changed so what we'll do is take our media player dot set volume and pass in a double and the double that we're going to pass in is the current value of our slider. Volume slider dot get value method. And since we're working on a scale between 0 and 200, let's multiply all of this by 0 0.01. So this should work now. If you go all the way to the left, you can actually mute it. Hold on, we need to fix something. I'm going to change the max to 100, and let's set the initial value to 50. And this is within our fxml file, so let's save this and try it again. Because when I was increasing the volume past the mid mark, it wasn't actually going up. Now our last mission is to work on our progress bar, so after about every second, let's update the progress of our progress bar to reflect how much of our song is complete. And then once our song is complete, our progress bar should be at 100%. So let's head to our begin timer method and create a new timer. Now we've already declared our timer, we just need to instantiate it. Timer equals new timer. Let's instantiate our task task equals new timer task and there's some code that we have to write in here later and we will take our timer dot schedule at fixed rate and we pass in a timer task 
a delay, and a period or interval of time to repeat our task. So we have our task. Let's set our delay to 1,000 milliseconds, so one second, and we will repeat this every 1,000 milliseconds. Okay, within our timer task, within these curly braces, let's declare a run method. Public void run. Let's take our boolean variable of running and set this equal to true because this is now running and we will create a double value named current and set this equal to the current time of our song that is elapsed. Media player dot get current time and this will return a duration object so we need to convert this to seconds. So follow this with the two seconds method. Now we need to get the ending time of our song. We can declare another double value named end. Well, variable. End equals media dot get duration. This returns a duration object and convert this to seconds. And just to test it, I'm going to system.out.println current divided by end. Then let's take our song progress bar and use the set progress method and pass in current divided by end. Now once our song finishes, we should cancel our timer so that it's no longer running. So at the end of our run method, let's check to see if current divided by end is equal to one. If this is true, then we will call the cancel timer method found near the bottom of our program. And within our cancel timer method, we will set running equal to false timer dot cancel. Now there are a few places in which we're going to call the begin timer as well as the cancel timer methods. Let's begin with the play media method. And the first line will be begin timer. Then within our pause media method, let's cancel timer. When we click on our reset button, we're going to reset our progress bar. Song progress bar dot set progress pass in zero. Then within our previous media method, after we stop our media player, let's check to see if running is set to true. If running, then we will cancel our timer. Cancel timer method. Copy our if statement and place this in the same area within our else statement underneath the previous media method. So I'm going to paste this right here, then head to next media underneath media player dot stop, cancel the current timer within an if statement if running, and place that here as well within our else statement. All right, let's test this now. So you can see our progress bar is filling with progress. Now you technically don't need this print line statement. I was just checking on the percent that our progress bar was filled. You can always multiply that by 100% and format it to to get a percentage. Okay, this is how to change the color of a progress bar, the meter that fills up, because normally the default is blue. So let's add this to our initialize method near the bottom. So that would be right here. So take song progress bar dot set style, and we can add a CSS property as a string. So that would be dash fx dash accent colon space. You can add a color name or a hex value. So let's say that I would like green to match. That would be 00 ff 00, then semicolon. So my progress bar should be green now. Yep, it's green. Now I'm just going to go over a few bug fixes that I noticed. So I'm going to change the delay of my timer to zero because if the progress bar is filled with you know some amount of progress, then we switch songs. Well, it still displays that partially filled progress bar for like a second. So let's change this to zero. One other bug that I noticed that we should fix, if I was to change the volume, 
let's say we mute it and then switch songs it'll still play at the normal volume. So let's take this line of code, media player dot set volume. And when we play media, let's also change the volume to reflect whatever our volume slider is. So that should fix that bug. Okay, yeah, you can see that it's all muted now. Also, when we close out of our application using this X button in the corner, we're going to do so gracefully using the main Java file so when we click on this X button, we're going to call automatically the set on close request method of a stage. So type the name of your stage minus stage dot set on close request. And we're going to pass in an anonymous event handler, new event handler, and add a generic type of window event, parentheses, curly braces, add any unimplemented methods. So we should have a handle method within our anonymous event handler. Platform dot exit method followed by system dot exit pass in a status of zero. So if there's any sort of cleanup that you need to do before a user closes out of your stage, you can write that code within the handle method of an anonymous event handler. Well, everybody, that is a simple MP3 player using JavaFX. If you would like a copy of all this code, I will post all of this to the comment section down below. Don't be afraid to smash that like button, drop a random comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow. Goodbye.